Let's continue our look at Creo Simulation Live in Creo Parametric 6.0. And one of the cool things about this trial versus my previous trial is that now I can analyze assemblies. Previously, they only had the capability to analyze individual parts. I've got my assembly open. Let's go to the Live Simulation tab. And again, it asked me, hey, Creo provides some content to help you get, get started faster. Would you like to review it? No, I can pretty much figure out everything on my own. And the Creo Simulation Live libraries have loaded. First thing that I'm going to do is limit the scope of what I'm going to analyze. Maybe I'm not interested in all the components that I have open. I'll click on the Scope button. And here we get the dialog box and we can pick which components that we want to analyze. Let's select them using the control key. And maybe I'm only interested in five of them. I'm not interested in all of them. And by limiting the scope, that'll help this go faster, even though it's pretty darn quick to begin with. I am doing a structural analysis this time. I need to define some constraints. You can do frictionless constraints displacement constraints, which will actually induce loads in your model, but I'm going to use fixed constraints. And here we have the fixed constraint dialog box. You can change the name if you want. You can also change the color that is going to represent it. And I'm just going to select a few surfaces down at the bottom to simulate where this is being restrained. That is good. Let's click the OK button. Now that I have my constraints, let's define a bunch of different loads in the part. To create loads, you have force, moment, pressure, gravity, and centrifugal. Let's define some force loads. And here we have a force load dialog box. You can change the name. You can change the color that it's going to be represented with. Here we are going to select the different surfaces. Let's select this cylindrical surface and we're going to define the force. You also have the option to change to define the magnitude and direction, but I'm just going to do an upward force, and from the world coordinate system, I can see that positive Y would be upward. And let's do a value. Now, before I change the value, I'm gonna use the drop-down list to change the set of units. So even though it looks like this model was defined in the metric system, I can change the, to defining my load in pounds force. And let's do a value of 200, well, let's do 100 upwards there, and click the OK button. And there we see the representation of the force on the computer screen. Let's do a, another force load, and this time I'm going to do it on this surface. And I want it downward, so let's do negative 200. And once more, change the set of units. And you can mix and match. They don't all have to be in the same set of units, which is nice. If I expand the plus button here, this is where you can define total load at a point in order to distribute it over geometry. Let's click the OK button. And let's now do a moment load. I'm going to do a moment load around on this surface. Let's do it about Z. And let's use a value of 50. Once again, use the drop down list. And maybe I want to use inch pounds force and click the OK button. And the last load that I'm going to define in here, let's do a pressure load and select some of the cylindrical surfaces. And holding down the control key to get those, I'm going to get the cylindrical surfaces on the eight components. They look like figure eight, so that's why they're called eight. For the pressure, let's change the set of units. I'm going to go to PSI and let's do a value of, let's say, 25 pounds per square inch and then click OK. And everything is set up for the analysis. If I want to start running it, you can click the simulate button here. Be aware that you can also do that from the quick access toolbar. So you don't even have to be on the simulate excuse me, live simulation tab in order to have this run. And I click on this and it gives me a warning that, hey, live simulation cannot run on some models that have incomplete or missing material definition. And one of the problems it looks like is this aluminum 2014. If I click list models, here we can see that, oh yeah, okay, the model stunt bike, okay, this particular part doesn't have the material. 
let's click OK out of there. And the simulation is still running. It. And you can notice that it came up in a matter of seconds, even though I am analyzing an assembly. First, let's take a look about at assigning a material. This is the part that I was complaining about. Let's open it up. And to assign a material, oh yeah, it's telling me that my model tree config file is no longer necessary. Uh, so here we have the part. To change the material assignment, you can go to File, Prepare, Model Properties. And this is an, a command that I use so often, I have it added to my Quick Access Toolbar. Be aware that you can go to this drop-down command in order to choose which commands appear in the Quick Access Toolbar. Let's choose the Model Properties. Let's click the blue Change Hyperlink. And here we have some legacy materials. Let's go to the Granta Library. Let's go to Non-Ferrous Metals. Let's grab this Aluminum Cast Alloy. Right-click on it and choose Assign. Yes, we're going to use a different material. Let's click the OK button. And that way we've changed the material assignment. But again, this was not included in the scope of my analysis. Let's go to the Live Simulation tab and turn the display back on. And here it tells me, hey, if I make any changes to the model, it's going to update the values. Let's collapse that or close that. And if I zoom in over here, it looks like some of the components have not fully meshed. If you see that in your model, you can go to the Setup drop-down menu and choose Performance Options. And you'll notice on, in the Simulation Quality dialog box, it's more weighted towards better speed as opposed to accuracy. And you'll notice as I crank up the accuracy, those components mesh will update and get me better values. And that's good. Let's crank it all the way up because this is just so darn fast that I can go with mac maximum accuracy. I don't even really need to worry about speed in here because, again, it's running off of the GPU. Let's take a look at a another couple of things. So we have the result options. We can check the box to show the min and the max value. And here we can see, okay, looks like the minimum value is over there on the end. Not surprising. And it's finding our peak stress over here. So maybe I might want to change the fillet radius or make this thicker inside of here if we're seeing failure. And for in terms of the result type, by default, it's showing von Mises stress. I like von Mises stress because it takes your normal stresses and your shear stresses and combines them to give you sort of a, a state of stress of the model. But depending on what you're interested in, you might be more inclined to take a look at something like the maximum principal stresses instead. We can see that those values, you can see the coloring has changed here. But again, I like von Mises, switch back over to those results. And also you can choose from this drop-down list what you're reporting the values in. For example, since I did my loads in PSI, I might want to use PSI or change to KIPS, thousands of pounds per square inch. From the deformation options, we can choose to animate the results and you can see where we're seeing the maximum displacement and you have the ability to crank up the speed and also crank up the scale to get a better indication of where you're seeing the deformation. This button over here, True Deformations, will give you a scale of 1. Let's close the Live Simulation Display dialog box. Actually, let's stop the animation and then close it. Uh, another couple things that I want to show you. In the results legend, you can choose to toggle between the color bands and continuous tone. I personally prefer continuous tone. Also, you have the ability to grab the value and set the max over here. You'll notice as I'm dragging the max down, more and more of the model is going to appear in red the lower that I go and then drag it back up and I can keep on going, 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 going and even going higher than the maximum value. Similarly, you can grab the minimum value and drag it up and as you drag the minimum value up, almost the entire model is now showing up as blue. 
and then clicking this refresh icon will set back to the minimum and maximum values. So let me know in the comment section if real-time simulation is something that would be useful to you or if you had a chance to play around with Creo Simulation Live yet. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.